The time is 6, 6 p.m. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this public meeting of the CPS Energy Board of Trustees is hereby called to order. Ms. Ramirez, would you please call the roll? Uh, yes, sir. We have Vice Chair Gonzalez, Trustee Kelly, and yourself before Ms. Pepper. Thank you, uh, Ms. Ramirez. Ms. Myers, uh, do we have a, okay, she's going to do this. Sorry about that. Thank, thank you, Chair Dr. Mackey. For those who are in attendance in the auditorium, we want to review the evacuation procedures so that we are prepared to be safe in the event of an emergency. If you hear the fire alarm, follow the instructions in the announcement delivered through the PA system. If asked to evacuate, use the glass doors exiting out the north side of the building. After exiting the building, progress west through the metal gate, then proceed south to the primary assembly point in the far corner of the parking lot. CPS Energy employees will lead you to the assembly point. If the doors on the north side are blocked, please use the door that you used to enter the building and the main entrance. Verbally alert others in the room of the fire or emergency and evacuate. The primary assembly point is the main parking lot in front of the headquarters. The AT&T parking lot over the McCullough and Brooklyn bridges is our secondary assembly point. In the event of a situation like this, our security team will be monitoring the situation and will notify the appropriate emergency services and team members. We also have employees nearby who are trained to administer first aid if needed. Safety is always a top priority at CPS Energy and for our community. And while we hope this information is never needed, we want to be sure that we are always ready. Reviewing an evacuation plan only takes a couple of minutes. I want to encourage everyone to review their evacuation plan with their family when they get home tonight. It is easier to cope with an emergency when you know what to expect, especially for children. By planning ahead of what you will do for a tornado, hurricane, blizzard, fire, or other disaster, you have that sense of security that comes from knowing what to do next. You cannot control when disaster strikes, but you can know what to expect, and once it does, you will, when you will have a well-designed plan. Having a plan so that everyone knows what to do means that you and your children will feel safer and more secure during the aftermath of an emergency. I will now turn the meeting back over to Chair Dr. Mackey. Thank you, Danae. Now I will ask our moderator, David, to provide instructions for virtual public input. Thank you, Chair Dr. Mackey. Good evening. My name is David. The CPS Energy Board of Trustees thanks you for joining its December 13th hybrid board public input session. There are several ways to listen to this event. You can participate in person at CPS Energy's headquarters. Listen by telephone in English, which the toll-free number is 855-962-1328, or in Spanish at 855-962-1497. Or you can watch a video simulcast in American Sign Language Interpretation at cpsenergy.com forward slash public input, or at facebook.com forward slash CPS Energy. Each person interested in speaking was encouraged to pre-register. If you pre-registered to speak, you may dial 855-962-1328 and press star three. Again, if you registered to speak virtually over the phone, you may dial 855 9621328 and press star 3 on your phone keypad. You'll be put in queue to speak. A member of our staff will take your name. 
That number again is 855-962-1328, then press star 3. This information can also be found at cpsenergy.com forward slash public input. Cristela will now provide a quick message in Spanish. Cristela. Gracias por unirse a nuestra sesión híbrida de opinión pública de la Junta Directiva de CPS Energy del 13 de diciembre. Si prefiere escuchar esta reunión en español, llame al 855-962-1497. Una grabación de la reunión estará disponible el miércoles en nuestro sitio web en cpsenergy.com diagonal opinión pública. Si se registró para proporcionar sus comentarios, por favor marque al 855-962-1328 y presione asterisco 3 en el teclado de su teléfono ahora para que lo pongan en la fila. Un miembro de nuestro personal tomará su nombre y traducirá sus comentarios después de que se proporcione. Thank you, Cristela. I would like to now hand the meeting back over to Chair Dr. Mackey. Good evening. My name is Willis Mackey. I have the privilege of serving as the chair for the CPS Energy Board of Trustees. Also present are our Vice Chair Janie Gonzalez and Trustee Ed Kelly. Trustee John Steen and Mayor Nuremberg send their regrets that they are unable to attend tonight's, but look forward to the comments that will be provided. On behalf of the board, I would like to welcome you to this public input session. Thank you for taking time to join us. We are eager to connect with you tonight and to share key updates about our rate case. Vice Chair Gonzalez, Trustee Gonzalez, and I will take in your comments. In the case that you have questions, our all our senior chiefs are here to provide responses. First, our interim president, CEO, Mr. Rudy Garza, will provide an overview of the important topics facing our community and utility industry. We will then move to the public input portion of our meeting. Please proceed, Rudy. Okay, testing. Sorry, I gotta, I gotta be able to look at you in the eye. And uh, first off, let me say, I wanna thank everybody for being here this evening. I know uh, you've probably got better things to do with your time than, especially during the holiday season, than being here uh, to you know, hear what we have to say about our financial need uh, in serving our community. So I just wanna thank everybody for your time tonight. We will try to be brief and get right to uh, the comments. Before I turn it over to Corey Kaczynski, who's our Chief Financial Officer, there are a few things I, I do want to say. First of all, I want to thank the board, um, you know, here publicly for giving me the opportunity to lead uh, CPS Energy. It's been a difficult couple of years for us, and uh, you know, we've had some turnover and some transition. Um, you know, my focus has been and will continue to be getting us moving in the right direction, focusing on providing service uh, for our customers, and, and generally being trying to be good community partners. Uh, with all the various you know members of the community that we're trying very difficult uh very very uh, uh focused on uh on connecting with right now you know my my charge and part of the process uh as we we talk about you know, our financial need uh in in the form of a rate request to city council who's our own regulator uh is um you know it's our job as leaders of this utility company uh, to you know look at our financial condition especially in light of the last two years that we've been in a pandemic. We've suspended disconnects. We saw winter storm Uri and all the financial implications uh, that have impacted not just CPS Energy, but the entire system in the state of Texas and try to bring uh, a balanced conversation forward about you know nothing more than what we need to do our jobs. We've got, you know, uh, we're under 3,000 employees, not a great place to be for a city that's growing. Uh, a lot of that uh, attrition has really been because trying to make our financials work uh, and do all our part over the last really decade that, that we've been trying to cut, cut costs. We've cut close to $900 million out of our financials over those years, uh, being as an efficient utility that our community expects out of us. Uh, but quite frankly, our employee counts are, make, are gonna make it difficult in the years ahead uh, to continue to, to provide the, the service our community expects out of us. And Corey will talk about that as an element uh, of our overall request. You know, 
the, tonight, events like tonight, we're, we're also having a Teletown Hall uh, tomorrow evening. We've had a number of those Teletown Halls. You can follow us live on Facebook or whatever platforms you use. You go to our website and you can click on a link and participate in that. That's tomorrow evening. Uh, I believe it's 6.30, right, Melissa? Um, but th these are events that are intended to try to do our part to rebuild trust. Uh, we've got to communicate better uh, and more effectively across the community. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's our job to provide service. We are, you know, our fundamental purpose uh, for being, you know, an entity in San Antonio is to provide electric and gas utility service and to try, try to do it in a manner that's affordable, that's reliable, that's environmentally responsible. All the things that our community expects out of us, we are trying to deliver, uh, you know, day in and day out. But, uh, you know, eight years, which is the last time we've come, come in for a rate increase. We've had one in the last 12 years. Uh, quite frankly, that uh, is not a reasonable expectation to put off these conversations uh, that long. We do anticipate having to come in multiple years over the next four or five years to, to reconcile where we are uh, and, and, and where the community you know, expects us to be in terms of providing service. So tonight we're going we're gonna to share all that information with you uh, in, a, in a transparent manner. We welcome your feedback. Again, thank you for being here. Our job is to sit here and listen uh, in the event we, that you'd like for us to engage you know, differently than we've done in past uh, town halls uh, or like this uh, or, or public input sessions. Uh, I, my, our entire leadership team is here so that we can answer your questions. If we have answers to the questions that you had, you have, we'd be glad to, you know, uh, concisely uh, answer them, you know, real time. Uh, I'm looking forward to that dialogue as well. So uh, thank you very much for being here. I will now turn it over to Corey Kaczynski. All right, thank you, Rudy. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I, like Rudy, will rotate so that you can see me a little bit. Uh, and thank you, Chair Dr. Mackey. Thank you, Board. Uh, appreciate that. <clears throat> so I have a few slides. <clears throat> I'll spend the next 10, 15 minutes just kind of giving a little overview of what we've been talking about with the, uh, the community over the last couple of weeks. Okay, so for today, I want to do a couple of things. Um, we'll talk a little bit about what we're doing in terms of uh, post-winter storm URI. Um, typically, that comes up as a conversation point when we're talking about rate requests and dollars and where that's going. Um, to Rudy's point, I'll give a little bit of context as to kind of how things have changed in our community over the last eight years, <clears throat> and then talk about the key areas of proposed investment, where the incremental spend is going to go towards and what for, and then talk about the customer impact from a, a bill impact perspective. So on this slide, there's a few items to talk about the things that we've been doing um, you know, for our customers, for the community <clears throat> in preparation for this winter. Uh, we've had a lot of conversations that Frank and Paul have discussed before at our board, but I'll go through some of these briefly. Fighting for our customers, number one. You've heard a lot of numbers in the news, and I'll talk about it a little bit later in terms of the, the fuel costs that we were charged. Of that billion dollars, we're disputing close to 590 million of that. That's money that has not been spent, hasn't gone out the door. We continue to fight those uh, those costs as best we can, uh, and those will, will play themselves out in the future. The other two items in terms of improving grid management, hardening critical infrastructure, there's a whole lot of investment that we've done in the near term and investment that we plan on doing in the coming couple of years. I'll mention a couple of them, and we have our experts here to talk more about them. <clears throat> but we've done a lot of preparation on our generating units uh, in terms of uh, weatherization, uh, insula ins insulation, uh, where need be. Um, another thing that Frank and the generation team have done is, is moved up planned outages out of the winter season so that come winter time, we have every piece of steel on the ground ready to go. Uh, and those are some key changes. From a distribution network perspective, Paul Barm has talked at, at length at various meetings about the changes that we've done. Uh, and the, the big change that we've done from uh, kind of a customer uh, impact perspective is we've added about a third more circuits that are available to be rotated during load shed. So that'll help for folks that were out for days. We're now targeting much more reasonable increments of, uh, of rotation in an event that is as large as Winter Storm URI. So in terms of what we can control, there's been a lot of investment uh, so far in the near term, and there's still longer term investments that we have planned for. 
There's still obviously a lot of things not in our control, but we want to speak to the things that we have done and we can't control for San Antonio. The other big thing was around communicating with folks and not just the community, but all of our partners. We've had extensive conversations with uh, SAWS. Everyone knows we had water issues, so we've been communicating with them on what those critical pumping stations are and so forth so that we're prepared. And obviously coordinating with the city and broadly speaking, um, improving our overall communication with our customers, text messages, being more proactive, things of that nature. <clears throat> so I think that's important to, to know as we go into the, the winter season, as we're having this conversation about the rate request, at a very high level, some of the key things that we've done. Okay, the next slide here, this is to give a little bit of context, as I was mentioning, over the last eight years. <clears throat> now, the big thing that stands out for us is really growth. If you look at that graphic from left to right, in that time, we've added about 125,000 electric customers, about 36,000 gas customers. That's pretty significant, and you know, if you've been in San Antonio long enough, you see the growth happening in, in your parts of town, likely. That's really necessitated a lot of investment. Uh, and that investment uh, we've been making over the last eight years, and it's worth noting that the, while we have additional customers, the prices that we've charged haven't changed in eight years. But the prices we're paying for that investment and that infrastructure have naturally gone up over time. Part of what's been able to help us stay away from rate requests, as Rudy mentioned, was over $900 million in savings that we've uh, tallied up over the last decade or so. We continue to try and find more, but we're at the point now where we're having this conversation with the community because we think there's absolutely a need. There were some other changes over eight years, especially with respect to technology, and we've all seen the speed at which technology is changing. We have some systems that are over 20 years old, uh, which is incredibly old for a, a utility our size and, and the, the customer uh, service that, that you expect from us. So over the next five or six years, we have uh, investments identified for that. <clears throat> and then, <clears throat> excuse me, from, from an employee perspective, we have about 300 fewer employees than we had about eight years ago. Um, one of the focus areas is about stabilizing staffing for us, and I'll speak to that in a bit. Uh, but all in all, this helps kind of contextualize how things have changed and kind of where we're at today before I dive in to the actual request. So from a process perspective, just to get some context, we really began the conversation with the, our city council two weeks ago. That's when it really became uh, kind of out there and we began that formal uh, process with our, our, our regular, ultimately. So on the screen, you can see that we have proposed a recommended 3.85% base rate increase. Uh, that approximates about 73 million in annual revenue for CPS Energy. Um, and ultimately, from a process perspective, um, and we talked about this at Council, the approach that we've taken here lately is one that focuses on emphasizing near-term <clears throat> investments, immediate financial stability. So we get a lot of questions, hey, what's different about this approach from the approach you know, in the summer where we heard a bigger number? Well, that's really the change. We're focusing on some of the key areas right in front of us and recognizing that a lot of the complex policy issues that we got to address, future generation, rate design, equity issues, those types of issues, um, we need uh, further conversation with our board, with our rate advisory committee. So this approach allows us to focus on what we need, stabilize us, and buys us time for those conversations. Okay, so what's included? <clears throat> On the next slide here, you see kind of the key four areas of incremental investment, and they're the areas that you would expect that we'd spend, spend dollars on. Infrastructure resiliency, this goes towards investment in our generation assets and our distribution uh, assets as well uh, to help support operations during extreme weather. <clears throat> From a technology perspective, I mentioned that we had incremental investment here, uh, and we have a number of projects over the next five, six years that we'll be making investment in and dollars to support growth. Uh, we continue to anticipate strong residential and commercial growth in the city of San Antonio, uh, and then people. Uh, we mentioned we want to stabilize our staffing levels, and so we have additional funds for that as well. You know, as an accountant, I don't normally talk all day, but I've been talking for about four or five hours, so bear with me. <laughs> So the second part of the conversation that we've been having has been around Winter Storm Uri. Now everyone's heard the headline, $1 billion, that was the fuel cost. Well, I want to break it down and be very clear with the community. Of that $1 billion, there's about $418 million that we have paid um, and uh, we have not recovered from our customers yet. These are dollars that we identified as uh, legitimate. We brought a third party in to assess the situation and identify what reasonable amounts would be. And, and that's the 418. Now, what we're proposing as part of this request is to recommend to our board and to our city council that instead of recovering those dollars through fuel like we normally would in a very short window of time, 60 to 90 days, 
We want to protect our customers. We want to minimize that bill impact. And the way we can do that is through a tool called a regulatory asset. That's just a word you'll hear us talk about with our board and with city council, but it's a tool that basically allows us to hold those dollars on our uh, balance sheet and expense that slowly over time, which means that I can recover it slowly over time for my customers as well. And so when you, when you take that approach, you have about a dollar and 26 uh, cent uh, impact on an average residential uh, customer's bill that'll go through fuel. Um, and I'll point out again, the other remaining $587 million that we are disputing, we have not paid. CPS doesn't have money out the door for that. We are not asking our customers as part of this request to recover any of those dollars. We're gonna let those, that, that play out over the coming months. And so this next slide is where we kind of all uh, put it all together. And this is you know, the, the slide that you would take home to your neighbors and friends when they ask, hey, what does this really mean to me on my bill? So there's two parts on this slide. And so there's a, a base rate increase, which is the first number I told you about. I said it was 3.85%, $73 million a year. What does that mean to you as an, as an average electric and gas customer? About $3.84 uh, per month. The second component of that, uh, on your bill, you know you have a fuel adjustment component. Well, that's where the second part of this, uh, this request is gonna be. That's that $1.26 that I mentioned earlier. So when you put those two together, you're looking at about a $5.10 total bill impact for a residential electric and gas customer. And these are for customers who are not on any of our affordability discount programs. I'll speak to that in a minute. So part of this proposal that we're talking about is recognizing the fact that we've had a lot of conversations with our board and rate advisory uh, committee and, and the council about uh, rate equity and um, uh, utility burden, things of that nature. Well, we wanted to do something in the near term because that is one of those complex policy issues I mentioned earlier that we need more conversation on. So part of this request, we've done two things for our affordability discount program for customers that meet those requirements. Um, we have proposed to offset the base rate increase component of that for customers. So the $3.84 I mentioned, we propose to offset that. The second thing we're proposing to do is increase our customers uh, that can be on that plan by about 14,000 customers. Uh, so potentially having enrollment of up to 65,000 customers. And so we think that's uh, you know important. Um, every at least the last rate request, um, we have uh, done you know, some element of uh, support for those uh, so those folks who qualify. <clears throat> you can see uh, total what that uh, looks at from a combined perspective of a total discount of sixteen dollars and fourteen cents per month for customers who qualify, and uh, close to two hundred bucks a year. The other thing I'll note that is new information that we didn't have in the summer that we have now for customers who qualify for for Billy discount. Uh, program is we received uh, 20 million dollars from the city of san antonio uh, uh, through their federal fund their arpa funds uh, that go towards customers that are impacted by the pandemic <clears throat> well that that's new to us they approved it right before uh, thanksgiving so that's really been helpful so for folks that um, you know are concerned about not just the go forward amount of increase on the bill who, who may need that help uh, on the back end if they've accumulated balances uh, this 20 million dollars that the city provided allows us to help um, clear out those, those old balances. So it benefits our customers, it benefits CPS Energy, we get the injection of liquidity. And so that's really been helpful and allows us to, to see how uh, folks respond over the coming you know, months uh, in terms of uh, paying off past due bills. So the next slide here is a quick summary of what it looks like from a commercial, uh, commercial account perspective. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any businesses in the room, but this is a quick snapshot of what the bill impacts look like for all of the different electric groups that we have, starting with small commercial all the way to super large, and then our gas customers as well. <clears throat> you can see that, generally speaking, the electric uh, customers have a, have a tight range around 3.6 to 3.8% uh, total bill impact. Their, their bills are structured a little bit differently than residential customers. Um, and so you see that they've got a little bit higher total bill impact, but you can see the nominal amounts there as well. Gas customers have a little bit higher total bill impact, but they don't have the benefit of our blended fuel uh, that our electric customers do. Okay, so we went through that pretty quickly. The last slide here is really around, um, just kind of orient everyone on, on who we're doing engagement with, what the timeline looks like, things of that nature. So at the very top line is our rate advisory committee. We've had a lot of sessions with them. As you can see, uh, they've been very instrumental in, in dialogue and influencing us, especially with this request. We have another meeting coming up 
uh, with them this week, as noted up there with the, the check mark. Um, and then going down the Citizens Advisory Committee, uh, we just met with them uh, last week. Uh, we're going to meet again with them in January. They're going to provide their perspective uh, as well. Uh, and then thirdly, we'll have uh, the Board of Trustees. Uh, we just had obviously a meeting today. Our next touch point formally will be on January 10th. Uh, we'll be asking for uh, approval from our board on the rate increase in the regulatory asset. But at that point, you'll see we already would have had input from the Rate Advisory Committee and the Assistance Advisory Committee, which is important in ensuring that we're getting the right input and that our board is getting the right feedback. And then following would be uh, our City Council meeting on January 13th, where we would uh, propose to, uh, to City Council in a very similar fashion as we do to our board, approval for both the, the base rate increase and the regulatory asset. So we're in the conversation component right now. No one's taking any votes on anything. The dialogue formally began about a couple of weeks ago with City Council, but I do know there's been dialogue for months and months in the media. So hopefully we can answer questions for, for everyone today. The very last slide just has a couple of dates for folks to reference. Um, some of them I mentioned on the previous slide and a couple of links, of course, to uh, different areas of our website where we do have more detailed information that you can research on your own and ask us questions later if you'd like. So I believe that's my last slide. And I will thank everyone for their time and hand it back to you, Rudy, or whoever's facilitating. I believe we'll move to the facilitated uh, comments. So, Melissa, who are we handing it off to now? Yep. Dr. Mackey? Uh, Rudy, I believe uh, this is David, uh, the moderator for the uh, phone based uh, hybrid event. Uh, we At this point in time, I believe we going to take some of the uh, callers live. I uh, would uh, encourage everyone who has dialed into uh, the event tonight that was interested in speaking. Again, you were encouraged to pre-register. If you pre-registered to speak, you may now enter on the call. You may now press star three. That's star three on your touchtone keypad or your phone keypad, and you'll be put in queue to speak. A member of our staff will take your name, and, and again, you can hit star three. This information can also be found at cpsenergy.com forward slash public input. Uh, let me go over the guidelines tonight for our, our, our commenters, uh, the citizens that will be going live on the phone. Um, as a reminder, each person interested in speaking was encouraged to pre-register. When you hear me say your name, that you are live on the call, your line will open. You will have two minutes to speak and ask questions. You will hear a chime sound to indicate that you have 15 seconds remaining. After the allotted time has expired, your line will close. Once you have completed your input or question, for a more immersive experience, we encourage you to hang up and watch via the live video stream at cpsenergy.com forward slash public input. I will call a speaker's name two times. If there is no response, that person will forfeit their opportunity to speak and the next speaker will be called. After I call the current speaker's name, I will also call the name of the next registered speaker. All the speakers are asked to introduce themselves to the board and state the city in which they reside. If for any reason you do not get the opportunity to convey all your input, or if you prefer not to speak, you may put your thoughts in writing and send to CPS Energy, Attention Public Input, 500 McCullough, San Antonio, Texas, 78215. Or you can email to feedback at cpsenergy.com. All written comments will be provided to leadership and to the trustees. Now I invite the registered virtual speakers uh, so we can hear your comments and questions. The first speaker tonight is Jesus Ramirez. Jesus, you are now live. Hi. Um, how is CPS going to attempt to implement a rate increase when CPS has a history of negligence that has come to light recently and board members making thousands of dollars in inappropriate spending, including the CEO, that makes over $900,000 a year? It's your job to make sure the consumers have the services they pay for and make sure your employees are conducting themselves above board. You all have lost the trust of the community and the $128 million that CPS had to pay to buy natural gas because 
CPS was negligent in buying it days before, as reputable news stations have reported on with pertaining proof. You all say that it's not suitable for the company to go eight years plus without a rate increase. It's also not suitable for a company, for the company to not stay on top of weatherization. You keep stating that you all have saved around $900 million when just about a year or two ago, the CEO was approved for a $440,000 pay raise. On several online media platforms, the common mindset is that there should be several investigations and audits handled by outside parties into the entire company. You all have passed. You all passed the 128 million dollar bill from to the consumer from not from not being prepared for. Uh, I'm sorry. You all passed the 128 million dollar bill from not being prepared to the consumer, who wasn't at fault for your negligence and not weatherization for not weatherizing, weatherizing or keeping surplus gas on hand days before the storm. That was well known about. You all also attempted to keep the total outages confidential regarding any, regardless of any arbitrary reason of, regardless of any arbitrary reason you all have for doing so again, it further the distrust and raises multiple ethical questions. You all have conducted yourselves poorly throughout this ordeal, and it seems CPS has a pattern of operating outside guardrails put in place to ensure the company, I mean, I'm sorry, the consumer is protected. Um, I yield my time. Okay. Uh, is there a comment uh, from the staff, please? Okay. Yes, this is Rudy Garza, uh, interim president and CEO. Uh, a couple of comments I'd make is that um, the event was from February. Uh, was an event unlike anything you know certainly i've seen in my 25 years in this business uh the the amount of fuel that was pushed through all systems in texas uh was you know just you know a, a tremendous um we've taken a lot of action based on what we've learned of february the entire state was under freezing down in mexico and while we had uh, you know the supply that we had planned for for a normal winter. Obviously, it wasn't a normal winter. It was, uh, you know, the, the event in terms of the amount of outages that it caused was five times worse than anything we'd seen. So uh, we have done a lot in terms of what we, you know, learned from last event uh, to, you know, to, to change our approach, uh, to have more physical uh, gas available to us this year than we did last year. So uh, it was certainly an opportunity uh, to assess, you know, kind of where we were, uh, and 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 make some changes to to, you know, to deal with that risk, you know, going forward. Uh, as far as the spending and some of the other comments, I'd say uh, I, the board took uh, action on a resolution today to really dig into um, our expense policies and uh, and the things that we've got to do uh, as an organization to be uh, mindful of how we're spending utility dollars that are ultimately. Uh, dollars provided to us by the public. We've got to do better. Uh, you know, I would characterize those as not systematic in nature. Uh, I think by and large, our, our employees use uh, the resources that we get through our system uh, to serve our customers, but certainly uh, there are opportunities to do better. And I believe the board is focused on, you know, a, as well as the leadership team on, on holding ourselves accountable. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker will be Donna Olson, followed by Teresa Herrera. Donna, you, you are live. Yes, thank you so much. This is Donna Olson. So I just want to make a couple of comments just really quickly up front about the registering to make a public comment. It would have been great for you to include that in the communication you sent out about the rate increase, uh, sorry, increase. Um, the, the verbiage, you know, to say join this website or this, go to this link to, uh, to join the online session, uh, you know, it's very, very disheartening to do that today when we were supposed to do that and then be faced with a message saying, you know, you really needed to register and make a public comment on Friday. It just would have been nice to have that up front and, and not hit that today when you try to join. Also, I signed up to join the online session and no one has called me back whatsoever. I'm on the call only. I, I wasn't able to see any slides at all. 
Um, and so all I essentially did was um, give CPS and the Keo or however you pronounce their name, whatever the company, the third party company is uh, named, uh, permission to send me quite frankly, spam email about offers. So that's very frustrating. So I just want to get those two comments out to give you that feedback so um, you can think about that for, for the future. Um, but I, I simply, you know, I, I listened to the first commenter and I, you know, I've looked at your financials. I've gone online, your basic uh, statements that are out there, quite frankly, unless you're CPA, they're still difficult to follow and understand. Um, and I, I consider myself an intelligent person, but I, I read a lot of it and I don't even know what, it, what it's telling me. But I have a very difficult time understanding how the company goes from bringing in so much revenue to not having the, the money to make improvements. It, so I'm, I'm keeping this very basic and high level, just, just dumbing down my concerns without going into those, those, uh, those statements, those financial statements. Um, you know, and, and I guess said differently, how, how I don't know, how is it that you can't afford to pay your leaders so much money and still not have money to, to pay for these improvements? And in addition, it, it just doesn't make sense to me that this exorbitant uh, expense accounts or expense reports or whatever of, of the two leaders recently who had to resign because of their exorbitant spending, how did that go unnoticed for so long? And that, that's kind of a scary idea to know that that, that went unnoticed for so long. Um, those are my comments. Thank you very much. Would the staff care to, care to comment on, on that speaker, or should we go to our next speaker? I think I addressed the, you know, the issue regarding expenses on the last go-round, so uh, I think we can go on to the next speaker. I, I would just say, uh, you know, Technology is a wonderful thing. You know, it doesn't always work exactly uh, like we want it to. So I apologize for the frustration uh, for getting on, and uh, you know, we'll continue working on it. Okay, our next caller uh, to go live is Teresa Herrera. Teresa, you you have the floor for two minutes. Yes, thank you very much to the board of uh, trustees of CPS for this opportunity for giving me um, to speak. Um, I am, first of all, a single parent with a child with a disability and um, running a household, and I honestly cannot afford continue increases to my CPS energy. Throughout this whole free issue, not once did I tap to your services when the federal government did provide millions of dollars to the city of San Antonio to assist us with our utility bills, and never once was I able to uh, take advantage of those uh, funds. So since they've given San Antonio millions of dollars for the infrastructure, for the issue of the freeze in San Antonio, uh, where is that money? Where are those dollars? And why should we as taxpayers have to kind of add, uh, deal with more increases. We're getting an increase to our property taxes. We're getting an increase to our water bills. Now we're going to get an increase to our electricity, our energy bills. When enough is enough. As a, as a, uh, law abiding citizen of this city and the state of Texas, I'm appalled. I'm really appalled. Because this is not right. It's, it's just not right um, because you're not taking into consideration the single parent that works real hard to put food on the table. And then she comes home and has to turn around and see her light bill, whether you have to make a decision whether you're going to pay your light bill or you're going to get your prescription. Think about that. When you vote, which I'm sure is already in process and is this particular increase already has passed i'm sure it has already passed you're just giving us the opportunity to vent but you know what thank you for that opportunity to vent and please take into consideration the millions of families in the city of san antonio that work from paycheck to paycheck to make ends meet we had just come 
over. We are just trying to get over this pandemic and trying to get back into our feet. Okay. Um, the participant had, had uh, used in, uh, all of her time. Our next caller to go live uh, with for two minutes is Carol. Carol, you are now live on the call. Okay. My, uh, you please yes, my pronounce name. your full name for the record, too, and then you may start. Correct. Uh, my name is Carol Sosinski. I'm a native of San Antonio that moved down here from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Everybody knows that's a very cold, cold place. At one time, I worked for an association called Midwest Association of Power Plant, uh, acronyms MAPP. You know, when we talk about the February events and no electricity, up there, uh, MAP was 14 United States and about three provinces in Canada. And this was about 20 some odd years ago. Now, the people don't know that what that was. Uh, they bought and sold electricity from each other. Why didn't that happen for Texas? Uh, Ma'am, I will just make a quick comment. Texas is, we, we do buy small components of power across uh, very small ties to other parts of the, of the eastern grid and in New Mexico, but ERCOT, the state of Texas, is a kind of a self-contained independent system. So uh, our ability to move power across state lines is very, very limited. Okay, we have uh, one last registered speaker, uh, Norma Tellez. Norma, you're live on the event. Yes, this is Norma Tellez. Um, I'm very disappointed, starting from the top, the mayor and the city council for allowing for political to misuse and everybody else involved to misuse the funds and um, the negligence of CPS and how they handled the winter storms and prior to that not buying sufficient energy. And I would like to see about a year's worth before another, before this increase goes through. Because I would like to see audits. I want to just, I want to see action and not just words. Okay, that was our last re registered virtual speaker. I will now turn the call over to Ms. Loretta Kerna for in-person registered speakers. Okay, thank you, David. Uh, we will follow a similar process for in-person speakers. After I call the current speaker's name, I will also call the name of the next speaker. Uh, when I do that, can you please make sure to make your way to the seat behind one of our two microphone stands, which are in the middle of um, these grid rooms? As a reminder, all speakers are asked to introduce themselves to the board and state uh, the city in which they reside. There's going to be a timer up here on the wall, and you'll have two minutes to speak and to ask questions. When you see a red screen, your time is up, and your microphone will be muted so we can allow the next person to speak. At that time, please return to your seat. I will now invite the first in-person speaker so we can hear your comments and questions. And our first in-person speaker is Henrietta LaGrange. Good evening. My name is Henrietta Queta Flores Lagrange. And one of the reasons that I'm here is to congratulate the board, CPS board, because we have waited 70 years to have somebody that is gonna represent us. I feel like uh, God is listening. And uh, let me introduce my friend, her name is Irene Felan, we both reside in San Antonio. We live in Mulberry Street, so we are part 
of the Mulberry Street Girl Gang. And we're seniors, but we don't mind being in a gang. And one, one of the reasons that I'm here is because my father retired from CPS Energy. His name was Juan Flores. Also, my brother retired from CPS Energy. His name is Homer Flores. In listening to a lot of the people, you know, I understand because a lot of us have things that we need to sort, to sort through. But what I find disappointing is the fact that we still need employees. And let me give you all some good advice. I'm a product of San Antonio Independent School District. Very well educated. I educated myself. And you can find the best workers in the SAISD area, west side part of San Antonio. Introduce yourselves to them. Offer internships. Remember, children or, or students like to work. So offer them internships. Go promote yourselves. Don't just sit there, please. And also, is $21 million enough for us, for the city of San, for the citizens or the ratepayers of CPS Energies? And today, I am only going to make it all about. Rudy Garza. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Our next speaker is Megan Sams, followed by Thomas Reister. And I'll call Megan Sams one more time. All right, our next speaker is Thomas Reister, followed by Dan Simmons. Thomas Reister. All right, uh, Dan Simons, followed by Laura Garcia. I'll call for Mr. Simons one more time. Uh, next, Laura Garcia, followed by Alan Montemayor. All right, Laura Garcia. All right, take it away, Mr. Montemayor. <laughs> Thank you once again for the opportunity to speak with you. Um, I don't take it for granted because I've been in many countries where you don't have this opportunity. Um, I've already harangued the board on many occasions about many different topics, and I did so earlier, so I'm not going to cover some of those same things. I'd like to speak briefly about trust. The environmental community has worked with CPS Energy for years, really trying to push you guys forward into renewables, into electric vehicles, to get rid of coal, many different things that we feel are in the best interest of the citizens of San Antonio. We're not doing it for profit. We're really doing it because we truly believe in these things. We, we trust you guys. We know that you're professionals. We really appreciate the great job you do to keeping the lights on and the, and the heat flowing, et cetera. But we don't feel that we can trust you. And the reason for that is that we've sat in those meetings and we've tied time after time after time to approach the topic of getting rid of the last coal plant in San Antonio. The San Antonio City Council has signed on to a process, the Climate Action Adaptation Plan, that says we are going to get rid of coal in San Antonio. We've asked to have that dialogue with you guys for years now. We've asked for the figures to make it a reasonable approach to do this in a time frame that's not going to bankrupt the CPS or the citizens of San Antonio. You have not been forthcoming with that information. You have obfuscated. You have slowed down everything. I don't know that's a, if that's a function of Paula Gold Williams and whether that, whether that will get better in the future, but I ask sincerely that you engage in that dialogue because we need to move forward on this for the citizens of San Antonio, for their health, for climate action, for many different reasons. The, the, the studies have shown that there is no financial difficulty with moving away from coal. So why isn't this happening? 
We do understand the fixed costs and the amortization of those costs over time. So let's have that dialogue and let's learn to trust each other once again. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Um, our next registered speaker only provided their first name. Um, so Leslie, if you are here, I'll call for Leslie one more time. And our next registered speaker is Ricky Carroll, followed by Charles Hanner. Uh, Ricky Carroll, are you here? All right, I'll go to Charles Hanner. Our next registered speaker, um, again, only provided their first name. Um, so Nanette, are you here this evening? Call for Nanette one more time. And I will now move to Christine Martinez, followed by William Roundtree. Christine? Call for Christine one more time. All right, we've got a uh, William Roundtree followed by Greg Ulig. William. All right, do we have a uh, Greg Ulig here? All right, I will go ahead and transition to the speakers who registered on site. Um, Klaus Weisworm. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> um, my name is Klaus Weisworm. I run a business in the Schertz area and live nearby as well. I have three points I'd like you all to consider. The first one is there remains an outstanding debt of about $100 million for utilities used not paid for by some people that probably couldn't afford them then, won't be able to afford them now even with the rate increase, and how then, then there are others that chose just not to pay and probably won't pay any time in the future either. So how would you equitably address those two dichotomies? You're looking at a rate increase of about 3.85%. It is the first increase in over eight years. Would you be better like sometimes other government agencies do where you do cost of living or cost of manufacturing or cost of production increases that you foster upon the citizenry annually? Just something to think about. Um, currently, you're increasing the discount for ADP, which is the affordability discount program, from $12.30 to $16.14. I think you're to be commended for doing that because they need all the help they can get. That's an increase of that discount amount by about 31%. Um, do you feel that this additional discount will provide better opportunity for that rate payer that has a tough time already to meet their obligation? It is an obligation. They are getting that utility, aren't they? The city's been asking for input on not city public's uh, energy, but the city itself. I get emails constantly from councilmen about what do we do with this extra money the Fed gave us? About $230 million worth. I'd offer that some of that could be used to reduce that debt that's out there. CPS Energy is the golden goose that provides this city about a million dollars a day, no strings attached. Here's the money, do with it what you like. There's not a whole lot of forthcoming on the city's part about what they're doing with that money either. And I think right now, since they have all that federal money, some of that could certainly be used that above the 21, 21 million they gave you to help reduce where that debt is. Uh, Klaus, thank you for being here. Uh, and I, I guess what I would what I would say is, um, you know, I do believe that we'll continue to have dialogue with the city about uh, federal dollars that are coming down uh, for you know to help offset you know some of the 
the, the support that our customers need to catch up and, and we're doing everything we can to maximize those funds. We're also working with the city uh, to look at resiliency projects for us and SAWS and you know other entities around town to ensure that critical infrastructure uh, is taken care of. Uh, I won't speak to you know the revenue we send back to the city. They're our owner. That's that's theirs to you know to do with what the community needs. Um, but uh, but certainly there's always an opportunity to to do as much as we possibly can for those in need in our community. And we've got a lot of programs that that do that. But we you know we're starting to knock on doors, which we've never done before. Uh, and and to ensure somebody who's eligible for funding uh, doesn't miss out on the opportunity. And so we're trying to change our game up as well and and be the best we can be in in engaging with with customers who need us. Thank you for your input. Our next registered speaker is Lisa Wendor, followed by Richard Owen. Lisa? No? Okay. Um, Richard Owen. I would respectfully request for some of the time that wasn't used by the others because we weren't notified of the two minute in advance. Mr. Garza? Members of the SLT, members of the board, members of the city council, although noticeably absent, and most importantly, fellow citizens of San Antonio, thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Dr. Richard Owen, although I'm certainly here as a taxpaying, rate paying voter and citizen of San Antonio. In the interest of full disclosure, I am not without electric utility industry knowledge of over 25 years, and eight of those proudly spent consulting with CPS Energy from 2010 through 2018. All of the above proceeding would indicate I watched as CPS dutifully invested millions in the climate change driven green energy initiatives demanded by the mayor and city council. Any discussion about a rate increase to the citizens was categorically denied by city council before it ever went public. And yet also without public input, every green initiative was pursued. In, in addition, CPS updated their infrastructure to provide better control of the power grid right down to the each appliance in our homes if we let them. This is not gonna end well because of your time limit. Now as most of the executive staff that manage the March to Madness Green has departed CPS, the mayor and city council are convinced we are pointed in the right direction and past the point of no return. I would submit to you a better idea, cooperation. I think we should take the city's portion of CPS Energy and turn it into a co-op, San Antonio Electric Co-op. The electric co-op business model is built and well proven. Electric co-ops are all around us and all over the state of Texas. The best example of how they work is that of a credit union that is a member owned and operated versus a bank that is controlled by self-interested executives. I think it's an idea that needs to be entertained. Thank you for your input. Is there anyone else who's in attendance physically in the auditorium today that has not provided input that would like to? All right, if not, David, I'm gonna turn it back over to you to see if anyone else is on the line to provide virtual input. Certainly. <clears throat> Again, if you have dialed into the event, you would like to speak and take two minutes for your public comment. We encourage you now to press star three on your phone keypad. You'll be put in queue to speak. A member of our staff will take your name. And that again uh, is star three on your touchstone keypad. Uh, if the information we've talked about also uh, throughout tonight is available at cpsenergy.com forward slash public input. But if you have dialed in and have not spoken, uh, please hit star three. And we'll give you a uh, second here. We do have one other person that has hit star three to get in the queue to speak. You'll be given two minutes uh, after a member of our staff will take down your name. Thank you. So right at this point, moment now, we do have one other person that has voiced an interest online through the phone to be taken live. If you give us just about five to 10 seconds, we should be able to take that person live.
Okay, we have uh, a Lorena Navieva uh, who wants to speak. Lorena, uh, if you please speak, your, uh, your, pronounce your name for us. I'm sorry if I got the, uh, your last name wrong. You will have two minutes for your comment. You are now live, Lorena. Hello, yes, I am Lorena Naveja. I recently have moved here to San Antonio, Texas. I've been here a year. So I was part of the family that was affected by the winter storm. Uh, I was out of water and electricity for um, four days. I do have two small children. So this does create a hardship for me, um, being that I'm a newly um, citizen resident of San Antonio, Texas, if the rates do increase. So I really do hope that you guys are taking every consideration into uh, uh, process of all these families that will be affected. Um, I do plan to become very involved with the city and all regarding any new laws, any rate increases. So I just want to share my opinion that um, causing increasing uh, to a 3.6, I believe, or 3.4 rate increase on the CPS bills does create a hardship for me because I am a single parent um, working a minimum wage where the wages have not increased here in San Antonio in a really long time. I have been doing my little research in regards to this city, even though you guys do have beautiful uh, places, sceneries to enjoy family life. That's one of the reasons I moved here. Um, so I really do hope that you are taking everything into consideration when it becomes involving rate increases. Thank you for your comment. Uh, we have one other, one other person that has uh, uh, gotten into queue to, to go public again with their input. Uh, if you give us another five to ten seconds, and I believe that should be our, our last person uh, in the queue. Thank you. Okay, folks, we have a, a, a Dana Causey uh, to speak. Dana, you are now live on the call. Please state your name. You have two minutes for your input. Thank you. My name is Dana Causey from San Antonio in the Bear County area. And my question is, CPS is one of the <clears throat> only companies that is still um, offering a full retirement program for their employees. And I think that's something that needs to be considered because that is a huge overhead cost that could definitely help with the uh, people who are trying to pay their bills. And that gets very difficult these days because the CPS employees make darn good money. So I just think that retirement program going forward, I know it can't be anything on the existing employees, but going forward, that needs to be something that needs to be reconsidered by the board. Also, the people who were affected by the snow in February – that had no electricity for three and four and five days, um, these rate increases to cover the expenses that y'all had to incur because of not uh, reserving enough electricity and gas for future use, which I understand y'all can do, uh, why are we going to be penalized when we had no electricity? So we didn't use any of that expensive electricity that y'all had to purchase. And I had another question, but I can't remember it, so I will uh, yield back. Okay, thank you for your input. Uh, that was our last registered uh, virtual speaker for the event. Uh, we'll now turn the meeting back over to Chair Dr. Mackey. Dr. Mackey, you have the floor. Okay, at this time, I would like for uh, Vice Chair Gonzalez to make a few comments. First of all, I want to thank Speaker Jesus, Donna, Teresa, Carol, Norma, Henrietta, Alan, Claus, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. I know you're here in the audience. Dr. Richard Owens, 
Lorena, and I believe Dana was the last speaker. So first of all, thank you for those of you who participated online and for those of you who participated in person. And many of you, I'm not sure you, you registered and you're not here. The whole purpose of these public input sessions is that we do hear your, impact, your, your feedback. It's been really interesting and really difficult this past year. And so I'm here to just again let you know that I can't change the past, but I can definitely tell you that for those of us who are here in person, we're very committed to changing the way things are done at CPS. And so we have new leadership and under the chair and, and a lot of us as trustees, we might always agree, but I will tell you that all of us are committed to doing right by all of you. It's always hard. As you know, I'm a parent of five. You can't, you can't treat them all the same and you can't please all your children the same. And so we are doing the best that we can under extreme circumstances. So here are the things that I heard and hope, and I apologize if I missed anything. Here are some of the concerns, the debt because of the no disconnect and the fuel cost during winter yuri. Mismanagement, uh, co-op as a consideration, effective communication to including offline and online, um, affordability, hardships for single parents and low income families, gain trust, especially with the environmental community. Uh, some people are pleased with diversity representation of our executive leadership and board, and then to look at the retirement program. So if I forgot any thoughts, you know, again, let us know. And again, we wanna encourage you to reach out. We do have assistance. It is important for those of you who are here, we can provide you information, share with your community. If those of you are very active in HOAs or on online, please share that information with your neighbors. It's important that you know that we have several programs available to provide assistance, not just to residents, but also business owners. And so again, we thank you for being here and we're here to listen. And yes, sometimes it feels like a formality. If you think I'm frustrated, sometimes I'm frustrated too. You know, but we, we are working to change that. And again, thank you. And that concludes my statements. And, and let us know how we can help you. I would like to turn it back over to David. We have one more virtual speaker. Yes, thank you, uh, Chair Dr. Mackey. Uh, we had someone to join us uh, late here. Um, we are going to bring live uh, Rosie Kilch. Rosie, uh, you have two minutes for your public comments. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak. I've been a native San Antonian uh, for 62 years, and uh, I love my city, and I've seen, and I am a realtor in San Antonio for 34 years, and I've watched our city grow. My concerns are that what, how, what the other speakers and other people have commented was the fact that this increase is going to uh, to cause um, cause some stress and uh, financially in a lot of people, and uh, I have spoken to people and they've tried to get some assistance, and it's really hard. It really is hard to work through those uh, those barriers that you put in front that you have to do this and you have to do that and you have to qualify for this and that. And there's so many uh, hurdles that you have to jump. Most people can't do it, especially if you you have uh, you you don't have the means to get even have internet or maybe even a phone. Uh, or and now with the increase of property taxes, we're going to see a lot of people not being able to make their 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 mortgages because of tax increase. That's the under, the other concern that I have. I've been through the 70s, I, the, I'm the 80s when uh, we went into that that uh, recession in San Antonio, and we know what that happened there. So the mismanagement of CPS and everything that we've been talking about today, I hope that we get a handle on this because we really need 
to move forward and not put any more stress and strife on our our citizens the, and also to make the developers and the builders accountable for all the thing, all the infrastructure that they've been destroying in our uh, in our land side uh, i'm looking at side my backyard in uh, a beautiful uh hillside that I've been looking at. Now I look at apartments. Rosie, uh, we appreciate your input. Uh, that was our last registered uh, speaker uh, uh, in the actual virtual event. I'd like to now turn the meeting back over to Chair Dr. Mackey. Dr. Mackey, you have the floor. Actually, it's Vice Chair. That's okay. I just got promoted. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, but in all seriousness, I forgot to mention the customer assistance phone number, and that is area code 210-353-2222. Again, the phone number for customer assistance for utilities is 210-353-2222. And again, thank you, Rosie, for calling in. Uh, this is Willis Mackey. I'd like to express my express the board's sincere appreciation to everyone who took their time to share comments and questions with us this, e this evening. We realize that we manage our community assets and in doing so, feedback from you is vital to the success of our organization and our community future. There was a couple of comments I'd like to, before I proceed, two things. Number one, we've listened about coal. I'm not a big major coal proponent, but remember, I'm a board of five, and I've expressed that things that we could do with coal, but we have to always think about affordability and reliability, always put that forth in front of us. So it's not about one individual, it's about this board and this community. And the other thing <laughs> I want to share, if they say this board get paid, I can tell you, I get this boy get $166 to come down here four or five times a week sometimes, and I don't know how many times a month. So if somebody say we own salary, yes, $166. I wanna make that very clear. The chairman gets like $206 a month, a month. So I just wanna make sure that that's clear. $166 for all trustees, and the chair gets $206 a month. And it doesn't cover, cover your mileage sometimes four times a week down here for a month and all the things and time that this board has put in. So just to clarify that right there for the next person to say that, uh, just make sure that that's understood. If for any reason you did not get the opportunity to convey all your input or prefer not to speak, you may put your thoughts in writing and send to CPS Energy. CPS Energy Attention, public input, 500 McCollum, San Antonio, Texas, 78215, or email to feedback at cpsenergy.com. All written comments will be provided to the leadership and the trustees. Members of the board, if there, are there, if there is no additional business for today, do I have a motion to adjourn this meeting in a second? Mr. Kelly moved motion to adjourn the meeting. Do we have a second? We have a second by Trustee Gonzalez. Second, do we have any questions or comments by this Board of Trustees? If not, we have a motion by Trustee Kelly, a second by Trustee Gonzalez to adjourn the meeting. All in favor say aye. Any opposed? Motion carries three to zero. This meeting is adjourned. Again, thank you all for taking the time to come down here. We really appreciate the input and we're listening, thank you.